another, another clear example of salvation being presented to non-Israelites. First and foremost, when you go back to Paul's calling in Acts chapter number nine, God tells him that he will bear his name before Israelites. <laughs> he didn't just say Southern kingdom. He didn't just say Judah. He says before the house of Israel, before Gentiles and before Kings here in Acts chapter number 26, Paul is doing just that. He's following the through and bearing the name of Christ now before the King. The King here is impacted by Paul's words. King Agrippa impacted by Paul's words. So much so that he says, Paul, all right, all right, are you trying to persuade me to be a Christian? What Paul says here is so profound. There will be no way to get around this. He says, whether short or long, I would to God that not only you, but also all who hear me this day. So, so you and all who hear me, who else was in there? Yeah, Festus, you had other non-Israelites might become such as I am, except these chains. Now, what's interesting thing about this for my Edomite haters out there is King Agrippa had I do was from Idumea. He had Edomite blood. And Paul said, after he said, are you persuading me to become a Christian, which contextually is a follower of Yeshua Hamashiach, he says, would together that you would not almost, but all together, such as I am, save these chains. Well, what was Paul? Paul was a believer. Paul embraced the promises of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Paul accepted the promises of Christ Jesus, who died on the cross for him and forgave him of his sins. And he wished that same blessing upon King Herod. He wished that same blessing upon all those other non-Israelites who were physically present, who heard him that day. This wasn't just giving them graham crackers. This just wasn't giving them a little blessing, you know, to keep y'all happy Gentiles so y'all could serve me later on in the kingdom. No, Paul says, such as I am. What is that? That's equality. That's, that's being a joint heir. That is being one who is a fellow citizen one who has the same rights and benefits. What? Such as I am, not beneath me, not under me. This whole ethnic theology, my friend, is not what the Bible is teaching. The Bible is teaching equality in Christ for those who have faith. And Paul was clearly preaching that faith to a Edomite as well as others. Acts 26, six and seven, it says, and unto which promise our 12 tribes instantly serving God day and night hope to come, for which hope sake, saying, excuse me, for which hope's hope sake, King Agrippa, I am, I am accused of the Jews. Why should it be a thought, a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? This is where it starts. This is where the argument starts, right? So now when we get to the bottom, Paul is going before court, like many black people go before court. And all he's trying to do is to provoke the court or the judge, in this case, the king, to let him go. He's not trying to save him. He's not trying to bring him forth. Before I even read this again and give and give the correct understanding, he did nothing for Agrippa or Festus or any of these men after this happened. So in 26, it says, For the king knoweth of these things before whom I speak it freely, for I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him, for these things were not done in the corner. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Then King Agrippa said unto Paul, almost thou persuaded me to be a Christian. And Paul said, I would to God that not only thou, but all that hear me this day will both almost and altogether such am I accept these bonds. Why is he even saying such as, as I am accept these bonds? Because he's locked up. He has the bonds off of him. So all he's trying to do is get Agrippa to let him go. So why would he say anything to Agrippa contrary to that? So all he's doing is saying to him, I wish all was like this, except for these bonds. If I can get out of jail, if I can give a real life event. When we were going to court against a uh, business called Liberty Place, they did the same thing. They played out videos. They did everything in front of the judge. And we said the same thing to the judge. 
we said to the judge, what we're saying is biblical. What we're saying is in the law. In the law, it says, happy shall you be that take it thy little ones and dash against the stone. And that Jewish judge, white woman, said what they're saying is of the law. Now, we're not trying to save that Jewish judge, but we are trying to win the case. And we won the case. And that's all Paul is doing here. You would have a better argument to show me where he actually tried to save Agrippa. He didn't save Agrippa. And if we look at the theme of this evening, all throughout, when we want to talk about who the covenant is for, Hebrews 8 and 8 is clear. Hebrews 9 and 15 is clear. Romans 11 and 26 is clear. Romans 10 and 1 is my heart's desire and prayer that Israel might be saved, not all nations. So in this, you just got a brother that's locked up trying to get out of jail. That's all that is. No more, no less. All we got is a brother just trying to get out of jail. Paul said, I stand in defense of the gospel, but you reduce his whole message and gospel presentation to a brother just trying to get out of jail. You must forgot there were times when they tried to get Paul out of jail and Paul said, no, I ain't going nowhere. He brought me in the front though I'm going out the front. Paul didn't care about no jail. Paul said, I would give my life for this. As a matter of fact, they told Paul if he go to Jerusalem, he was going to be bound in chain. Paul said, I'm not only ready to be offered up, but I'm ready to die for this. And you reduce this man's message to a brother just trying to get out of jail? Come on, Cap. Come on. Listen, Paul was absolutely clear. He didn't deny being a Christian. He said, I would to God that you were all together just like I am. You would have us believe Paul was just lying. You would have us to believe Paul was insincere about what he was saying because he was just a brother trying to get out of jail. Are you kidding? Paul didn't care about jail. Paul died for the faith. He wasn't trying to get out of nothing. He was trying to get into stuff by preaching the gospel to a people who needed to hear it. And guess who one of them was? This Edomite a King Agrippa, along with the other Romans and officials that were present because he said everybody present. So no, 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 no. This, let's not make this a movement of Black Lives Matter. This was Paul preaching the gospel. He wasn't just a brother trying to get out of jail. I wasn't even gonna talk about all that, but you got me a tripping because you reduced this man's ministry to being a brother trying to get out of jail. This, you just got a brother that's locked up trying to get out of jail. That's all that is. No more, no less. Are you? Got a brother that's locked up trying to get out of jail. That's all that is. No more, no less. Paul said, I would give my life for this. As a matter of fact, they told Paul if he go to Jerusalem, he was going to be bound in chain. Paul said, I'm not only ready to be offered up, but I'm ready to die for this. And you reduce this man's message to a brother just trying to get out of jail? Come on, Cap.